Hi, how are you guys? Thank you so much for joining us, for being part of our family. And some of you have been faithful even going through this series of Revival Mindset. I just want to say thank you and we really appreciate you in whatever part of the world. I know some of you guys, it's, be, it's really, really late at night and there are those who wake up, okay, in, in like, like some of our watcher wakes up like 4 a.m. Okay, just to be with us. So we really appreciate that. We are actually midway in our uh, Revival Mindset series. And let me reiterate, re the purpose of Revival Mindset is to create a culture wherein revival can be sustained and revival can be steward and revival can continue to grow. So each of these sessions, we have seven sessions and each of these sessions are strategically chosen because we believe these are some of the foundations that will strengthen revival okay so we are in the the in our we are midway we are in session four which is prayer so we are midway so if you have somehow missed session one session two or session three just look at the archive if somehow uh, you can't find the archive you can uh, send us a direct message and we'll give the link to you let me say once again uh, we have a, a free ebook wherein you can follow as you watch in that ebook there are a lot of blanks so you're as you're watching you can fill up all those blanks and after you you finish that ebook we want to give you this a physical book for free mailing free just send us that ebook with all the blanks answered and of course the answer can be found in, in the video so because we really want to encourage you not just you know just to listen but to participate to really be able to finish all those sessions because all all those sessions uh complements and strengthen each other and i and we believe that revival without having a, a proper revelation and and a lot of people experience revival personal revival they experience revival in the church and somehow it, it has not been sustained and because there are there are uh uh, wrong teaching and, and, and wrong perspective or wrong understanding of revival or, or there are areas okay, of revival that they uh, that they, are, they, they don't understand it the way the, the scripture taught okay somehow they are unable to sustain the, the revival and by God's grace our group has been in revival since 1995 personally I've been in revival since 1995 uh, our group Fresh Wind has been in revival for 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 about two decades now. Thank you, Lord. Okay, and somehow along the way we have picked some some teaching and perspective that we have seen work with us, and I hope it will work with you guys. Session number four, prayer. If there is a topic that a lot of Christians struggle with that a lot of Christians are disinterested with and, and an activity that a lot of Christians are bored with, that will be prayer. But it will be ironic if you can say that you are revived and yet you struggle with prayer. Because the purpose of revival is to revive us, give, give us vitality and give us passion. And above all, it's more than passion for the things of God, is being passionate about God. And if you are passionate about God, surely you will be passionate about prayer. And so many Christians may experience revival and may uh, find their prayer life uh, something that is, that is wonderful for a while, but then they get bored and the fire of revival dies. So today, this is not but about pointing fingers, okay? We are not going to uh, condemn you. We, we just want to encourage you. And, and, and I believe that by nature as a christian we are built to love prayer and if we find prayer difficult it's because we have taught wrongly about prayer i remember one time i i decided this was years and years ago i decided i'm gonna pray for an hour i remember jesus was in the garden and and he asked his disciples to pray and he find his disciples sleeping, so he told his disciple, can't you wait for me for an hour? 
And somehow, in my mind, I thought that every Christian are obligated to pray for an hour. Okay? Right now, I pray more than an hour, but I, I, I want to say, uh, I want to point out, there was a time I find a struggle and I find it an obligation. This isn't a prayer, you're not obligated to pray for an hour. Okay? I, I pray more than an hour, but you are not obligated. No Christian are obligated. Okay? So, so I decided I'm gonna pray for an hour. So, so I prayed and I prayed and 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 you know, um, I thought I said, surely, surely it's it's uh, I've said all, all I want to say. I cried out all I want to uh, everything that I I think prayer is about. You know, a loud voice praying in tongues. You know, all the activities that I know about prayer. So, so I thought to myself, I surely. I've reached at least 40 minutes. Okay, my goal is an hour. Surely I've reached 40 minutes. And I look at my watch and guess what? <laughs> it's a little more than five minutes. I'm like, what? <laughs> I have 55 minutes to go and I'm already exhausted. <laughs> but then something happened to me and I begin to enjoy prayer and there was a time i remember i was in, in a prayer room i'm enjoying the prayer time and uh, it's more than an hour like two hours i think if i'm not mistaken and when i went out of the prayer room one of the secretaries of the office of the pastor which was a friend of mine and she said oh pastor you surely you have some need right now you have been praying there for a long time like he, she was thinking I was struggling with something. And I I didn't answer. I don't know what to answer. Because I thought to myself, what did I pray about? What did I pray? I spent more than an hour, actually about two hours. And, and yet, what did I pray about? Then I probably asked something from the Lord. But as I look back, I at the time, I could not answer her. I, I could not remember anything anything not even one thing that i asked of god because i was there in that prayer room just enjoying the presence of god i was worshiping i was talking with him i was listening i was like really really enjoying so that when when, when the time comes and i run out of time because i have another schedule and and, and you know what if god anoint your prayer I've been many times, not all the time, but many times you'll find that prayer, you will run out of time praying. Okay? So in Tagalog, sinasabi namin, nakakabitin. Okay? Like, there's not enough time to pray. Like one time, I, I, we have bacon on, on, uh, on the table and, and, and our, our helper cooks some bacon and... and and I asked one of my kids, is this bacon enough for all of us? And he said, well, <laughs> there's always not enough bacon. <laughs> because <laughs> my family loves bacon. So, there's always not enough time to pray. You always run out of time to pray if you know what, if you know the proper way to pray. And, and so that is my goal. This is not to boast about my prayer life, but this... But I, I hopefully, by the end of this session, you will just enjoy prayer. Let's start. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. Pray in the Spirit at all times, with all kinds of prayer, asking for everything you need. To do this, you must always be ready, never give up, always pray for all God's people. Let's talk about definition of prayer. Defining prayer. A simple definition of prayer is, there's the blank, communion with God. Communion with God. Or you can even say relationship with God. So when we think about prayer, don't think about asking. Don't think about other stuff. Just a simple definition will be relating with God or communion with God. There are at least three common types of prayer. The first one is petition. Petition is asking God to meet a personal need. Okay, let's say you are you are sick, 
and you wanted to pray for, for your healing, you are petitioning to God. If you have uh, like a problem, financial problem, you ask God to help you, that's petitioning. So all of those that we're going to talk about, the common types of prayer, they are part of the big umbrella of relationship of communion with God. The second type is intercession. Intercession is asking God in behalf of another person. For example, a while ago, somebody uh, messaged me and she caught a uh, coronavirus and, and she was tested positive. So she asked me to pray for her. So I, so I did. I called her up and some people, I, I, I just pray and prayer and, 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 and leave a message through chat or I leave a, a voice message of prayer. That is that is intercession, a form of intercession. And some people would like to like really spend a longer time of intercession. Like they would picture this one person and let's say this person is sick and, and, and they would even use their imagination and, and imagine when they prayed, intercede, the power of God would come and like a light would come on, on, on the head of that person and causing that person to be healed. So that's that's intercession. All of those are prayer, but if you're going to be specific, you, you, you're you able to define there are prayer that you pray for yourself, it's called petition, and there are prayer that you pray for others, it's called intercession. The word intercession, it's like interceding, like this one person is going to that direction and you intercept. This person is sick. Okay, he's going all the way sick, 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 and then you intercede. This person is going to, you know, uh, they don't know Jesus, they're going to go to hell, but in your prayer, you intercede. So that's where we get the word intercession. Okay, So the third form of prayer is what we call soaking prayer. In the old days, they call it contemplative prayer. Okay? I like the word soaking, actually. I don't know who invented it, but in the prophetic circle, in revival circle, the word soaking is very common. So, you can, you can imagine, for, for, for example, you are marinating okay, a dish and you just soak it with butter or, or, or with, with the herbs and so forth. And you let it stay for a while so that those ingredients okay, would, would enter okay, the, 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 the meat that you're, you're, you're going to cook, that you're going to prepare. Okay? So that's the picture. I like the word soaking in a sense because you already have the Holy Spirit. We already have the Holy Spirit, yet we are we are wanting more. So when you are soaking, you are there. You're just waiting upon Him. You are waiting. You already have it, but you are you are in it and you are waiting for more. Okay, like you are you are under the water, the water of the Holy Spirit. You are already under the water, but you're letting the water enter you more so that's the concept of soaking soaking is like waiting it's just relaxing relaxing in god's presence and this is something that a lot of christians don't know the ancient call it contemplative and some people call it meditation okay so it's just relaxing it's like like hanging out with a friend going to the coffee shop and sometimes you talk sometimes that other person talk sometimes none of you are talking you're just enjoying the presence enjoying the company of your friend and your friend is enjoying your company okay? in the same way with god even with your best friend you don't talk and talk and talk all the time you know you don't get nervous when nobody's talking there's a silent gap okay no you just you know you just relax in the same way god wants us to relate with him that day imagine moses went up to the mountain and for 40 days okay and 40 night he was in the mountain communing with god he was soaking in the presence of god do you imagine that he's is always talking or god is always talking like like there there is no silent period all the time they're talking that's why a lot of people are stressed out when it comes to prayer you know i was telling you that story okay i was stressed out i thought i have prayed for for an hour and it's just a few minutes because i keep on talking there has to be an activity shouting and, and screaming and talking all the time no okay there's such thing as waiting upon the lord as just enjoying the presence of god as con 
contemplating and dreaming about God. It's okay if your mind wander a little, a wander a little there. And if your mind wander as you're waiting upon the Lord, you just pull it back and just, just pull it back. Just, just enjoy that time. You can have a music in the background, okay, or you can have an instrument in the background, or you can have nothing. Okay? Just enjoying the presence of God. So, three kinds of prayer. Uh, petition, praying for yourself. Intercessory, praying for another person. Soaking, it simply means communion. In its most basic form, however, prayer is communion with God. You may also say that all activity has to do with communion with God are a kind of prayer. Okay? Listening to His voice, in other words, you, um, if prayer is really communing with God, relating with God, you, you can do a lot of things. Okay? Uh, sometimes you are, uh, some of you are good at art and you draw, draw a prophetic painting. Okay? You are relating with God prophetically and, and, and that's good. That's in, in, in one way. One of the things I love to do is, is writing and journaling. You know? you know, the reason why we have Psalms, a book of prayer, is because David began to journal his prayer. And in Psalms, you can see him pouring his heart out. When he's frustrated, you know he's frustrated. When he's angry, you know he's angry. When he's joyful, you know he's joyful. Like somebody said that, that if, if you're going through something and you don't know what's happening to you, your emotion, you, you read through Psalms and, and, and one of those passages will resonate with you. Because like all kinds of emotion that David went through, he wrote them down. So in the same way, okay, in the same way you can do that, you know. You know, um, I, I write down things uh, I, I talk to God with, and not all the time, okay. There's no right and wrong, okay. Um, sometimes I feel like it, sometimes I just do it when, when my mind, um, I can't control what I'm thinking, I just nail it down, okay. And I'm angry at someone, I, I'll, I'll write it down, okay. And, and, and when I write it down, my emotion calms down. When I write it down, I will learn what I'm really thinking about. And, and I would open myself and I will ask God to speak to me. And I would write down as fast as I can the things that I believe that God talks to me about. Okay, So, so I, I don't try to analyze it. I don't try to ask, is this God or is not God? Or is the theology right or wrong? I just write it down. It, it will be later, okay? If it's necessary that I will go back, especially if there are things there that 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 uh, there are a new revelation. It, it will be later that I would uh, compare it to the Bible, okay? If there are things like major decision on, on that journal, that's a time that you you know you communicate with some of your leader, people that you trust, trust, and, and ask. Do you think that God spoke to me about this thing? But that's one way. That's 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 a good way to relate with God. Journaling, drawing, singing, singing. If 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 prayer is communion, which prayer is, singing, worshiping to God, it's a form of prayer. You can write poems to God. Okay? You can you know, you can read books with God. Okay, yeah. So, so prayers. I believe one of the reasons why people get stuck with prayer, prayer is boring because they don't see prayer as relationship. If you can see prayer as a relationship, like you are relating with someone, someone you, you love, you can write a letter to that person, you can draw something, a picture, you can make arts and give it to that person. That's what prayer is. You can dance. I remember one time I was, I was preparing to pray and this song keep moving in my mind. Uh, it's about dance with me, oh Lord. Okay. I don't want to sing that song. Okay, and, and I understood. So that entire time, which I allot for prayer, I just dance and dance and dance and dance those hours away until you know I ran out of time. So it can be like that, you know. Don't be stiff. Of course, we we have discipline. Of course, we we want to form habits. Okay, but there can be season. There can be season, and most of your prayer is just worshiping and loving on Him. Prayer is really about relationship. 
Okay, letter B, tips in praying. Number one, talk to God like a real person. The black there is talk to God like a real person. One time, God told me, the more you see me as a person, the more you relate with me as a person, the more enjoyable your prayer time would be. Some of us, we see God like He's far, far away, like He's a deity that expects you to do certain rituals. If you follow through the ritual, if you discipline yourself, then He will answer your prayer. Okay? I remember a time wherein I was in bed and God talked with me and said, Hey, you are compartmentalizing your prayer life. And I said, compartmentalizing is not even a word. So, so God spoke to me in my mind. Okay? I didn't have an open vision. I didn't have an audible voice. God just spoke to me in my mind. So I got out of bed. And I was about to sleep. I got out of bed, went to the library, pulled out the dictionary, okay, and look at the word compartmentalize. And sure enough, it's in the dictionary. And I understood what God was telling me. You see, I allotted like 15 minutes of worship during my prayer time, 15 minutes of reading the Bible, 15 minutes of speaking in tongues, and 15 minutes of praying in my words. Okay? Like a ritual. And, 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 and maybe that's alright. Okay? But for me, it became religious. Like if I don't do that, okay, I feel that I'm not pleasing God. Okay? The more you treat Him as a person, God wants to be treated as a person because He is a person. If you are a person, if I am a person, much more God. The Bible said we are created in the image and the likeness of God. If you have your best friend with you, you know there are movies wherein they show God like, like a person, like, like this movie called The Shack. Okay? How do you talk to a person? Someone was having a problem with his prayer life and, and somebody suggests this, that he pull out a chair. And imagine Jesus sitting on a chair. And so you talk to Jesus, the invisible Jesus sitting in that chair. He learned prayer doing that. He was sickly and he died. Okay? And when his family came in the room, they saw him with his head on the chair. If Jesus was sitting there, his head would be on the lap of Jesus. And there was a smile in his face. And his family said, wow. Okay. Grandpa really enjoy his time with God. Now, you don't have to pull out a chair, but maybe you do. Maybe there is a need for you if you have this religious mindset when it comes to talking with God. Talk with God as a person. So, sometimes you talk with a person, sometimes you listen to a person. One secret you can learn about prayer is asking questions. You can ask God questions. You can expect Him to answer. And many times when God answers, it's not going to be in an audible voice. It's going to be through your thoughts. He will speak to your spirit and your spirit will translate in your mind. So it will sound like you. Like God speak to us. He speak to us in our spirit and we just translate it in our mind. That's why when you read the Bible, scholar would say when Paul talked, it will be very eloquent in Greek. When Peter talked, because he's just a fisherman, he's not as educated as the Apostle Paul, it will not be as eloquent. So God uses us. He uses our vocabulary. He uses our brain. Most of the time, that's how he speaks. Yes, sometimes God will speak in an audible voice. Yes, sometimes people see vision. And I do encourage you, okay? I, I do encourage you to ask God for a picture, ask God for a vision. So sometimes I would, I, I, I would set the stage. I would begin to start with that, my imagination. So it's because sometimes God would speak to us through our imagination. So I would set the stage. I would uh, put up a bench and said, Jesus, I like you to sit down here. And I would begin to imagine him talking with me because I, I don't want to just limit him in my room. And sometimes God would move that imagination. Okay. And sometimes God will move the imagination that you set. And you set a scene in a bench like I, I did. And then he, he changes scenes. It's going to be in the sea. It's going to be in the water. And sometimes I, 
I get interrupted in my prayer time and that's okay. And maybe you're praying, in the middle of your praying, you, you thought about you're a little bit hungry, you want to go to the kitchen and, and, and get a banana and eat, that, that's okay. okay. You can eat banana and talk with a friend. You can eat banana and talk with God. <laughs> you, can, you can talk with God anytime, anywhere. Okay? You can talk with a friend at the same time in your mind you're also talking with God. In fact, that's why the Bible said, pray without ceasing. It does not mean you are moving your lips all the time. It means being aware of God as much as possible and communicating with God, communion with God as much as possible. I remember there was this one person and I was encouraging him and, and he felt that he's been failing in his prayer time. And I said, uh, I know you. Uh, all the time your thoughts are with God. You may be doing some other things, but you, your, your mind, okay? keep on uh, thinking about God. You think about God many times a day. So that is prayer in itself. And of course, we want to have disciplined time wherein no one is around, just us and God, and we can really focus on God. When, when God will give us a vision, when God will give us a picture, uh, we don't get interrupted, you know, uh, because nobody was walking around. Of course, we have to have that time. Okay. But all throughout the day, you've been driving a car, you've been walking down the street, you, uh, you've been eating, you can talk with God and you can listen. To God talk with you and that's all right as long as you don't make major decision by everything you think that God tells you okay that's all right that's all right to have an imaginary friend okay? because God talks to us also through our imagination God invades want to invades every part of our life okay? including our imagination and that's also, I believe, one of the reasons why people have a hard time to pray. They, they just don't, they just, they don't use their imagination. They're afraid, actually, to use their imagination. Okay. People who really enjoy prayer, I see people enjoying worship, like woo, and then there are another person. They they just get bored because they're not using their imagination. They are not engaging. The more you picture God, the more you will enjoy prayer. Number two, be yourself in prayer. Be yourself, that's the blank, in prayer. You can learn a lot of things by listening to how other people pray. But, it, but in the end, God wants you to be yourself, your unique self. Be transparent to God as much as possible. I mean, be respectful to God, but yet there are times, you know, you, you have to have your guard down. You don't have to talk in perfect King James English, thou, thee. You don't have to be like really, really formal. Some people think that respect is being formal. So when they talk with God, it's going to be formal. He is primarily your dad. Yes, he's the king of kings. Yes, he's the lord of lords. Yes, there's a certain level of respect. But he also wants to be our daddy. Primarily, above all else. Not only that he, he's our daddy, he wants to be our friend. These are different relationships. Actually, God wants to relate to us as a, a, a father with a son. God also wants to relate to us as a friend with a friend. The Bible said there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother and is referring to himself. He's the friend that sticks closer to a brother. We should not be more transparent with other people than when we are with God. We should not be more of ourselves than when we are with God. We like friends that we can be ourselves, that we can disclose without feeling we are being judged, okay? Without without you know, without our friend interrupting us in the middle of our talk. We want to be real and not be afraid in the same way with God. That's why the, our lesson the, uh, in the past about identity is very, very important. Okay. If you're struggling with sin, you tell God, God, I'm struggling with this sin. 
I'm struggling with, with anger. I'm struggling with jealousy. He's not going to laugh at you. I'm, I'm, I, Lord, I feel that I'm stupid. <laughs> okay. Tell him that. Lord, oh, this loss. I'm struggling with this. Be honest with him. He's not going to kill you. Okay. He knows all about that. Okay. And he enjoys talking with you. Lord, this is how I feel. I'm... I want to murder this guy. <laughs> and, and you know, God will listen to you. Maybe in the end he will tell you, Hey, you, you better change your mind. I will help you change your mind. Okay? Uh, every time you have negative thoughts, I want you to work on that. If you want God to be a real person with you, to be real with you, talk with him. Without, without a mass, be yourself with him. Talk with him. Talk with him as you talk with your best friend. He is your best friend if you believe, if you allow him to. Number three, set a specific time and place to pray. We will find that in Daniel, like Daniel prayed three times a day. There's a specific time because our body, okay, we train our body if we we train our body for example if you train your body to wake up every 6 a.m. it will struggle for a while if you have sufficient sleep like seven uh, six seven or eight hours if you have sufficient sleep you will wake up every 6 a.m. without an alarm clock you have to train yourself okay now if you keep changing that time sometimes you wake up 5 p.m. sometimes you want to wake up 7 a.m. If you keep changing that time, your, your, your body will not be trained. Your body will get confused. So every time, okay, you're, you have to retrain your body. Every, every time you will struggle with your body. How many of you want to struggle with your body when it comes to prayer? Of course not. We want our body to cooperate with us. You can, we can train our body to, to do anything. If you are lifting weights and you've been lifting weight every other day or every day, guess what? The day you stop lifting weight, your body will look for it. Your body will ache for it. Even though your body knows like, oh, lifting weight, it's, it's, it's just, it will sore the muscle. Your body will look for it. So in the same way, set time to pray. I believe a lot of struggle with prayer will end. When people start setting time. Some people, it's early in the morning. Some people will be late at night. Some people will be twice a day or thrice a day. That's up to you. Set a time where you can, you know, this is the time. I mean, I'm talking to you. I'm talking about praying all the time uh, as much as possible. But make it the goal to have this exclusive time, concentrated time, just between you and the Lord. Number four is prioritize soaking. So the black there is soaking prayer more than any other kind of prayer. So we talk about what soaking means. It is very important to focus on that. Yes, you may do petition, you may do intercession, but if you run out of time, just focus on soaking because that's primary, the most important thing. It's your personal relationship with God. It's not about other people. It's your relationship with God. In fact, if you have a good relationship with God, God will take care of all those other things. Sometimes you don't even need to pray. Many times I, you know, I don't need to pray for other people. I would just say, Lord, take care of that. Just a thought. And God just take care of that, the other thing. Prioritize soaking time. The time that you just enjoy God. Because God's first interest is our relationship with God. Not answering our needs. God, of course, wants to answer our needs. But first and primary, more than anything else, it's about our relationship with Him. 5. The best companion during prayer time is music. Okay, uh, I've said that before. It's just spending... Uh, listening because when you are listening to music your your mind will not get so distracted like like when I, I'm praying and, and waiting on God uh, and I, I will my mind would drift and then suddenly I will hear song and my mind will will come back again okay and, and because music calms you down and you you will have a hard time if you're stressed out praying okay? and secondly is, is Bible reading okay in the Bible God highlights things. God can speak to things while you are reading the Bible. 
If there is a time to study the Bible, you look at the Greek con and look at the concordance and you uh, you study what other people from the commentary says about a certain passage and that is good. But but during your time of communion with God, okay, don't don't be more concerned about looking at all those things. It, it will be after, but you just read it casually, you just read it leisurely, you just meditate on those on, on scriptures okay it may be a simple single verse and you read it over and over again until you get it you ask god to talk with you about that verse for example uh your loving kindness is, is better than life lord your loving kindness is better than life and you think it over and over again and that is called meditation so so another instrument is using the bible then about journaling we talk about that early on Number six, try to include God in our thought every time as much as possible. The Bible said, in all our ways, acknowledge Him. So this is a practice. Okay? It doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen uh, if you do not uh, do it intentionally. You just do it intentionally. Don't condemn yourself if you have you know, uh, certain goals and how you will talk with God. Okay? Uh, we just build. We, we build the muscle. As everything in every practice, we, we build it by constantly doing it. Letter C. Listen to God in prayer. God talked to us. God talked to every one of His children. In John chapter 10, verse 27, Jesus said, My sheep listen to my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. If you are a child of God, it is a promise in the Bible that you can hear His voice. In fact, even unbelievers had, list, had uh, heard God spoke to them. Uh, I would ask a group of people, Christians, many times, and I would ask them, How many of you have heard God as, as, as an unbeliever? And it would be funny, very few of them would raise their hand. And I would say, How did you get saved? <laughs> You got saved because you heard God spoke. So, so we can hear from Him. So prayer is not a monologue. It's a dialogue. It's you talking with God and, and God talking with you. So the first, step is, the first step is to be able to hear God speaks is to believe. So that black derb to believe that He speaks. Everything we receive from God, we receive it by faith. The more you believe, the more you will hear from him and the more you will hear from him the more you will believe and the more you believe the more you will hear from him okay in daniel 4 verse 10 it talks about a vision in the mind now these were the visions in in my mind for many many years i'm not receiving a vision from the lord because i thought vision has to be open okay and there is such thing as an open vision. An open vision is when your, your eyes is open and you can see it, like you can see the angel or you can see Jesus. Okay? A, a vision of the mind is like a thought. Okay? If I say, for example, I want you to picture an elephant, a yellow elephant, a red elephant, a blue elephant. Can you picture that? If you're able to picture that in your mind, a yellow, a red, a blue, that's called part of our imagination and that's how God speaks to us a vision of the mind so Daniel received a vision of the mind in fact his uh, is his prophecy which is so important for scholars and then they see Daniel connected with the book of Revelation he received it through a dream he received it through a vision of the mind we who are influenced by the West okay wants everything to be logical but the truth is there's a lot of part in the bible that are mystical okay? and god uses our mind so if we allow ourselves if we allow god because without faith we cannot receive from him there was this story wherein jesus was ministering to the people in the midst of that there's a voice from heaven and God spoke, this is my beloved son. And, and the crowd who, who heard that, some of them said thundered. Some of them said it's an angel. Some of them said it's God. All of them heard the same voice and we just say it thundered. We say it's just in our imagination. It's something that is natural. But if you are a person who understands, who believes that God can speak to you with pictures in your mind, God can speak to you with your thought or with an impression, 
you can hear more from God. I remember driving one time uh, with a group of friends, with a group of pastor, and one of the pastor just had a vision. He said, I had a vision of an angel. And, and we asked him to describe that angel. And he said, it's so beautiful, I could not describe it. So I asked God. This is, I am driving, my eyes are all open because actually we're going down the zigzag road and I could not close my eyes, we all die, have an accident. So while I'm driving, I have this picture just in my imagination of an angel, I would describe it like, like a butterfly with, with purple on the edges of his wing and, and yellow and gold somewhere in the middle. And, and so I begin to describe it to him and he looked at me and said, you are right, that exactly the angel that I saw in an open vision. But I didn't saw anything in an open vision, I was driving. It was all in my imagination. And, and so that's actually a good way, you know, if you, you are in a prophetic culture. Because there are people that confirm and you, you, your faith for that you hear from God grows. Okay. He talks to us through the scripture that we read, some of the scripture we jump out, he talks to us to other people. So a picture in our imagination, a planned coincidence. Okay. So Paul was saying in, in Philemon, he said that um, the, the servant of Philemon who escaped from him, okay, he met uh, in a jailhouse and Paul was saying, it, it is possible, the reason why I, I met your slave, your servant who escaped from your hands, is because so that he will get saved, so that he will be my connection to you. So what Paul is saying, sometimes God uses coincidence. I'm not saying that every coincidence comes from God, and I don't look around for coincidence to hear God's voice, okay, because that it can be dangerous. Okay, it can simply mean it can simply be a coincidence. It can be can be the devil. There's no guarantee with that, but God can speak through a coincidence. And I have so many experience experiences about that. I mean, yeah. <laughs> okay, he can speak to us through vision, he can speak to us through dreams. A good way to practice listening to God is to ask Him a question and then expect Him to answer. If one of my family, if we're in a grocery and there's so many aisles and, and there are times that I would stop and I would say, Where, where's my family? Where are they? What aisle are they? And I would stop and I would wait. And God will give me an impression and I would go there and I will find them. But of course, if we ever receive a major you know direction in our life like in our prayer time you think we God speak to you that's why we have counselor the Bible said in the multitudes of counselor there is safety we ask for spiritual health from other other people because we may be possible that we be eat, just eating too much pizza and we thought it's from God the more you grow in your knowledge of the Bible and the more you spend time with God the sharper your discernment of God Will be Hebrew chapter five verse fourteen talks about the more mature we will, the more we will know what's good and evil. You, we'll, in other words, our discernment will be stronger. So it takes time. Yes, it takes relationship with God. It takes practice. So don't worry about it. It's like the first time somebody calls you on the phone. His his or her first time to call you. You may not recognize the voice, but if that person keeps calling you. You may not even look at caller ID. You will know who that person is because you're used to. Your ears are used to. You are familiar in the same way with God. Enjoy your prayer time. Thank you for listening to us. Thank you for joining us. God bless you abundantly. Hi, this is Miguel. Thank you for watching. If you have not yet liked or subscribed, please, please do so. In fact, why don't we do it right now? Just press the button at the count of three, all of us, and press subscribe. One, two, three. Oh, let's do it again. One, two, three. All right. All right.